Hey, I'm Jake and I'm a prestige 100 Ghostface main with over 7,000 markdowns. This is higher than even Ach Darva and most other content creators that you may know, except for, uh... This puts me in the top 20, so I think that I'm pretty well qualified to make this video despite only 2,500 hours. I'm going to try to break down as much of Ghostface's power add-ons, what maps and perks he excels on, as well as the optimal ways and most fun ways to do as many things as I could think of. This is probably going to be a very long video, so there's going to be a lot of timestamps in the description, or maybe video chapters if YouTube will let me, to make the video a lot easier to comprehend. Ghostface's power is his Night Shroud, which with a right click allows him to become undetectable, which is a status effect where survivors cannot hear your terror radius, see your aura, or read your red stains. For the entire of his power, Night Shroud ends when the Ghostface attacks, is stunned for any reason or is revealed by survivors. This reveal mechanic is not very stable on the survivor side and can be affected by things such as resolution, but you can get a pretty good feel for it. While you are in Night Shroud, you can progressively stalk survivors while standing or five times faster while leaning to fill up this meter around their head, which will result in them being marked. This is a unique status effect that applies exposed, but because the mark applies exposed and it's not a flat exposed timer, it's not countered by per perks like Vigil. Important to note that a marked survivor cannot reveal the ghost face. Ghost face can also crouch freely up and down, unlike the pig, who has a timer to crouch and does it very slowly. Ghost face power is the stealthiest in the game, even compared to other stealth killers such as Myers or Pig or even Sadako. He has no tell that he's the killer at the start of the match like Sadako does with her TVs, and can insta down significantly faster at the start than even a Myers can if survivors are unaware. Ghostface has a very unique playstyle despite not being the only stealth killer, because of his ability to 99 people. <laughs> this ability to 99 people is going to make or break your games, and this is the bread and butter of Ghostface. You might find that he's a kind of a hard killer to get into. Ghostface is one of those few killers where single mistakes can turn a game for you or against you instantly, which makes him very punishing to get into, and you might feel like you're not learning anything at the start of learning him just because he plays so differently to other killers. Leaning properly is a crucial element because it causes survivors to be marked in one second of total stock time compared to the five that it would take otherwise if you were just standing and stalking. This can be the difference between a survivor revealing you and you marking them before they can break you out, which could get you a very important down at a very important time. So need to understand the reveal mechanics. They're pretty finicky and nobody can know the exact way they work without looking at the code. But just in general, if someone can see 30% of your body, they can reveal you. When I start getting revealed and I'm not sure how to hide or where the survivor is, I like to crouch immediately. This doesn't always work, but it's a pretty good idea. Your mask doesn't count towards that 30%, which is why leaning is often a safe way to mark survivors, even beyond the additional speed. It's a bit less buggy on your side, and you can often stalk survivors with just a pixel of them, which is the same way that Myers can, which makes it pretty easy. But the problem is that Ghostface lean is server-sided and not client-sided. So even if it might sometimes look like you can lean, there's some places where you can't lean and you're just going to need to learn these, like Blight with his sliding or bouncing. Ghostface used to be very dependent on three add-ons, and the rest of his were mostly bad, but they got updated a while ago and now he really doesn't depend on the same three add-ons he has and a much bigger variety of add-ons that he can use. Even still, his two best add-ons in my opinion for the average player are going to be the Walleye's Matchbook and Philly, which decrease power cooldown by 6 seconds and increase stock speed by 20%, respectively. Also, Olsen's Wallet, which can restore your power after you break a wall or pallet, which can be helpful if you get stunned, you can just break the pallet and you've got it right back. I personally really like Olsen's Address Book, which will show you the survivors of marked survivors. I personally really like Olsen's Address Book, which will show you the auras of marked survivors who rush in action. So like if they vault a window, you're going to see them for 5 seconds. And that can get you a lot of mind games that are very helpful, as long as you are good enough to consistently get your stock done properly. 
Ghostface has some pretty decent iridescence. They're not the most amazing thing ever, but you will definitely get value out of them. More value if you're good. Ghostface caught on tape will restore your power instantly whenever a survivor goes down to a basic attack. This can be very helpful if you have two survivors 99 and they're next to each other. You don't want to mark them both at once uh, for some reason, often because you just don't think you can get both downs or it's just a bit risky, which often is the case with marking multiple people at once. You can mark the first one. If you get that down, you'll instantly have your power back. And then if the second person makes a mistake, you can get that down too. And you don't have to risk losing your 99 or your first down to go for it. Outdoor security camera will reveal the auras of every survivor for seven seconds whenever you down a marked survivor. This is very good. This is just like a barbecue, but with no range. And just whenever you get a mark down, which is very useful. It'll show you maybe if someone's waiting nearby to get a save. If that person's 99, they could go down. There's just a lot of options that this opens for you. Drop leg knife sheath will give you 10% haste for 5 seconds after marking a survivor, which is obviously good and can help you capitalize on ambushes very well. In the same way, victims detailed routine exhaust survivors for 5 seconds when they are marked, which can help you get around some pesky sprint bursts and maybe even life, and it pairs well with the sheath that can help you capitalize very hard. If you're fast and they can't get away using whatever tool they have, that's going to help you quite a bit. The rest of his add-ons really aren't great, but I've tier listed them with some brief descriptions so that you can at least get the picture. Except I will tell you that cinch straps are horrible. Sometimes it's a ghost face, and you will see this in my gameplay. It can be useful to turn your power off yourself so that you can have it on command later, or you turn it off on purpose so that you can get it back sooner. And this will come up multiple times. You'll see why. But getting rid of your ability to turn your power off on command with a basic attack is very bad and you're not going to want to do that. This could result in some bad situations like say you have one survivor hooked and multiple of them are 99. You can't risk them revealing you. If they reveal you, you have no insta downs for the next 20 seconds, maybe less depending on add-ons. You can't risk this because they're going to use this window to get a save. If you turn off your power manually and you have it on command, then whenever they come for the save you will have it guaranteed instead of trying to hide around until you can get it back and this could turn maybe a four man out into like a two or three kill game ghostface benefits from a number of perks that other killers may not benefit from as much he has a slower more pokey play style that requires you to go out of your way and care more about applying immense pressure in specific areas very quickly because ghostface is a killer that can have games go from winning to losing and losing to winning very quickly the best thing you can do as a ghost is have a good starting ambush and follow that into a good setup with multiple 99s you roll into a good mid game. When you have multiple survivors 99 and you know where they are, you can deliver what I like to call the killing blow to the survivors and make it extremely hard to recover, which makes Aura perks very strong for him. The reason I like to call it the killing blow is because say you've got one survivor on the hook, if you can very quickly catch and intercept a second. Uh, maybe put them on the hook and then if you even find a third maybe this is going to be great there's nobody working on gens because obviously you've got one or two people on the hook you're chasing one the last person's gonna have to come get involved you can just make things very very nasty this is also just general killer advice but it can be very useful on Ghostface in particular because of his ability to 99 survivors and down them before they even see you coming which can let things get way out of hand very quickly if you get multiple 99s and multiple good ambushes chained together. This is why I tend to consider Ghostface slightly a build-up killer or slightly a snowballer in a very unorthodox way. He kind of needs to build up his stock throughout the match and then snowball it by just getting multiple downs right next to each other. That's the best way that you're going to turn a game from losing into winning. His best perks mostly reflect this. I've grouped his best perks into three categories. Uh, regression, Info, and Lethality. And then also, there's some Miscellaneous. But I don't really count that as a category. And then I have some good builds that I personally like to use. We've got some strong builds that are going to be very good. Some fair, more nice guy builds if you just want to chill. And some fun builds to mess around with.
So for aggression, Ghostface really likes to use perks that either go well with his ambushes or apply passive pressure when he hits his mid-game stride. Perks that you have to go out of your way to use or consistently reapply are not really consistent with the way Ghostface wants to be played. Typically a Ghostface isn't even going to walk in straight lines between gens unless they really need to stop a gen because that will get him spotted and lose pressure, compared to taking a more scenic route that can cut the chase entirely. If you spend 30 extra seconds walking between a gen to get an ambush that's going to cut down on a 40 second chase is a no brainer. And it makes perks like pop, eruption, call of brine, overcharge, oppression not really that effective as they would be on other killers. Perks that had to be manually used rather than naturally happening. Perks that have to be manually used rather than naturally happening go against the flow. I personally love Jolt. It was even good when it was still Surge and only the half of what it does now, and now it's even better. When you down a survivor with a basic attack, gens within 32 meters of you lose 8% and everyone on them screams along with giving you a notification. This goes great, because usually you're going to ambush a survivor on a gen or near a gen, and it can hit multiple at once. He doesn't really need much more aggression than Surge, but if you need more, Pain Resonance goes really well with it, which will get you 25% knocked off the most progress gem whenever you put a survivor on a Scourge hook for the first time. I also really like Hex Ruin, even after the nerfs. Ruin makes it so that while its totem is up, any gen that isn't actively being worked on will regress at normal speed. If anyone dies, Ruin will automatically deactivate, which decentivizes tunneling. But if you get someone killed early enough to not get any value out of Ruin, you're probably doing pretty good anyways. Survivors currently tend to really underestimate Ruin, and for good reason. It got gutted a while back and is now half speed, but there are still definitely some ways to make Ruin hurt. Survivors don't really know that Ruin is good on Ghostface, because they only have experience dealing with it on other killers where it's not really important to cleanse. Corrupt Intervention is also good, because Ghostface is a weak early game. Having those three generators blocked until you can get that first ambush in is pretty good. If you combine this with some other perks, it can even be better. Technically, Sloppy Pudger also goes into this category. It's not really gen defense, but it is regression. Uh, and Ghostface being undetectable so often makes it very easy to interrupt healing, especially pairing it with info perks. And if you interrupt healing, they're going to lose that progress that they spent so long getting to the hemorrhage on Sloppy Pudger. We have the Lethality perks. He's an M1 killer, so he can get significant value out of Save the Best for Last especially because he can use his stock to one-shot the obsession, meaning that he will lose only two stacks instead of four. This can get you a lot of rapid hits very, very quickly, and just generally saves you a lot of time, especially in chase. If you've used it, you understand how big of a difference Save the Best for Last can make in a lot of different scenarios, and how widely applicable this is. Play with your food is also good on Ghostface because of his ability to one-shot. The way play with your food works is that every time you drop chase on the obsession, you gain a stack that grants you 5% speed boost, that can grant up to three stacks and every time you use an attack you will lose a stack which means the one shots are a very efficient way to use it because you will only lose one per chase if you're going for marked survivors and this can give you a real edge this 15 percent is a significant amount the ability to sneak up on survivors also makes hex devour hope more worthwhile although often when i try to use it it just gets cleansed instantly but that's like the deliverance curse and it's not actually reflective of the perk but, you know, if you're luckier than I, you can use it to basically stomp games and more survivors in the mid game, which will then become your end game, basically. What Devour does is it gains stacks on unhooks as long as you are far from the unhook and will let you insta down at 3 stacks and kill at 5. The insta down part isn't the super necessary part since Ghostface can already insta down, but once you hit 3, it becomes very easy to hit 5 as long as you guard the totem, because survivors will play much more scared once it is revealed at 3 stacks and you get your first down with it. Another more niche perk that I don't really like, but you can use, is Coup de Gras, which will gain two tokens every time a gen pops. Whenever you start a lunge attack, if you have tokens, one will be consumed and your lunge will be extended by 80%. I don't really like it, because I like to lunge around for a lot more reasons than just Coup. And also because it does require losing generators to use, but it can definitely get you a lot of good value in ambushing, especially if you pair it with things like the sheath or the detailed routine from earlier. Info perks. This is where the fun begins. Most of Ghostface's power comes from using info perks to know where a survivor is and where they are going or facing, because knowing this can allow you to go around them and sneak up on them entirely unnoticed for better ambush. 
or it can allow you to cut off 99 survivors and down them for free, or even finding the obsession so you can use play with your food or avoid them to use save the best for last, or you can just know where they are so you don't get revealed. There's a lot of uses. I won't explain all of them obviously, because there are so many info perks, but I am going to talk about a couple of my favorites as well as I might show a few others on screen. Lethal Pursuer is my absolute favorite. It shows you everyone's auras for 9 seconds at the start and lengthens every aura reading effect by 2 seconds. This can really help you avoid being revealed at the start so you can go for a much better ambush and avoid having your cover blown, as well as helping you to get multiple early 99s that you can carry into mid game. It also has massive synergy with every other aura reading perk for obvious reasons, and also corrupt intervention, almost guaranteeing you that starting ambush if you play it right. Barbecue and Chili can help you to cut off a rescue and also tell you what gens are being worked on and from what side, and honestly is a pretty good perk that can even get you some nice grabs. Floods of Rage is also really good, showing you everyone's auras for 9 seconds after someone is unhooked from a scourge hook. This can show you again who is working on what and where and also who is on the move to be cut off. The best part about Floods is that unlike Barbecue, it can happen when you are just out and about and not specifically hooking. So you can get it in chase and that'll help you in chase if you don't have the journal. It, if you're going up for an ambush on a gen, you can see where the survivor is. If somebody's trying to hide from you, you can know where they are. You can tell if survivors are healing under hook and maybe you want to go back and get that easy stock for later. It's just very good. And remember, just because someone is injured doesn't mean it's not a good idea to 99 them in a good amount of cases. Oftentimes, they do not realize they will be 99 and waste time healing and that will give them misplaced confidence to make a mistake that you can reap the benefits of. And this happens very often with floods, they unhook, they heal under the hook, you mark them, or not mark them rather, but you 99 them for later and they're just going to waste time. Darkness Revealed will show you the R's of survivors nearby lockers whenever you open one, although it is on a cooldown of 30 seconds gives a very good information and happens whenever you need it, although it does depend on locker spawns. This is going to be very good on Midwitch or the game or RPD. It's just typically better on indoor maps, which is where Ghostface excels, but you might find that if you're playing on a lot of outdoor maps where his power is not as effective, you might be struggling to get value out of Darkness Revealed to help you out of the hole these worst maps have got you stuck in. The rest of these perks also work very well, but might require some specific builds, such as Surveillance, which shows you aggressive gens. It's good if you pair it with Jolt, Pain Res, or especially Ruin. Nurses combos well with Sloppy, and Discordance goes well with Save the Best for Last, because only one survivor could be an obsession. If you see that there's two on one gen, you know there will be a good target, as well as Discordance just being a very good perk in general. Some other perks, if you're not trying to do a serious build, there's a few other perks that could be fun to consider. Dragon's Grip is a meme perk on Blight that exposes survivors after they touch a gen you recently kicked. And now you don't really want to kick gens as Ghostface, but you can use the undetectable to hide right nearby for an easy down if survivors are not aware. They're probably going to figure out the first time what you're doing if you do it. And they probably just won't come back. And then if they don't come back the first time, you just wasted a ton of time. Here's the best builds, some meta builds that are just very strong. Um, Jolt, Pain Resonance, Ruin, save the best for last. You're going to want to run the wall eyes and the tape for your add-ons. This build is very slowdown heavy, and it can be annoying to play against with all the slowdown, but it will consistently get you value. Alright, Mother's Dwelling. Now you might be wondering, what makes this build so meta compared to the other one that I call the nice guy build? It doesn't seem that different. But once you really look, the eerie tape and the pain res do actually make a very large difference. Bounce? <laughs> not, <laughs> not in my house. <laughs> you see, I've already got my power back, so I can start stalking again right after I down her. Perfect. Oh. 
and that got jolted, so stopped it. He's about to get a pain res too. And it's being ruined. So that gen, I'm probably not gonna have to worry about for a little bit. Right, perfect. Is she actually gonna trade this? Wow, you should not have done that. Ah, that tree blocked the way. Oh, there's about to be another pain res. That gen is not even on anymore. Like, that's the crazy shit you can do with this. I think that was Kate. I am of course more interested in this Yui. Did you get this window? Yeah, she did. Okay. This window is essentially no counterplay to it. You just have to vault it. You can't mind game it or even try to mind game it really. If you do, you're just trolling yourself. Well, I guess she thought you could get multiple vaults out of it. You can't get multiple vaults out of it unless you chain it with something else. That would be absurd. Oh, fuck. Didn't really mean to do that. But you know what? I'm fine with it. Damn. All right, well, that's a vacuum. I didn't mean to get stuck out. What is he doing? I guess he was trying to slip past me and got body blocked. Ah. Alright, well there's Rowan gone. She's already been pain rezzed, so I don't even need to worry about what hook I put on now. I hate looking down. No oh, plot twist. She plot twisted. I don't think I'm gonna find her. It'd be crazy if I had like Deer Stalker though. If she did that just a bit earlier and I could have seen her on barbecue do it. Oh fuck. Well, you know what? Ah! This guy twice for the extra stacks. No? Okay. I was wondering if maybe he like hit me with deception. But he did not. She went into the void. Oh, stop the other person. Alright, well. No matter, I already had my. Oh, prompt pressed. Once you press space to hook and start that action, they can't save anymore. Fuck. Ah! 
I haven't seen Kate anywhere. We're still at five gens. That's the power of pain res. What if you stack pain res? Honestly, like two people dead at five gens. I don't blame them. And I don't see her on barbecue. Get one, get one, get one. Nice. Hey, you see, that's kind of a try hard build. Um, they're on console. I can't even, like. Sorry about the try hard build. Devour Undying, Barbecue, and Lethal, then pair that with the Sheath and Routine. And the speed from Devour is going to combo with the speed from the Sheath. Also, you're going to be using Barbecue to, after you hook, you obviously want to leave that hook for Devour to gain its stack. Barbecue will show you where to go. Lethal is going to extend the value you get from Barbecue and Undying. It's also just going to show you the survivors at the start which is obviously good this build mostly relies on getting that devour to hit three to five stacks enough to do game winning damage even if it gets cleansed and make sure you use lethal to stop survivors who spawn nearby your totem because there's a good chance that they will find it other campbell's chapel now like i said i usually get cucked with my totems this is a that's not a great spot this is by a gen that one looks like a good spot it's like it's not in the open because it's not right next to a gen I saw two over there and one guy on this gen maybe if i can suck him oh yeah oh yeah okay now she knows uh now i'm more interested to come over and, uh, okay it's a bit visible it's a bit out in the open Oh yeah, that's very out in the open. That's not gonna be a very helpful, totem. <laughs> Are we just in the pre-drop everything, fucking? I don't think that's gonna work out very well for her. Dude, no way we're camping for another battle. Yeah, that totem's already gone. Alright, well, I whipped. I don't know why I swung at that. Come on, please. Oh, and they're already working on this gen. Yeah, my this totem is not long for this world either. Wait. Okay, never mind. I didn't see the aura. I thought I lost it already. Ah! 
Please tell me she's not about to power struggle me. Okay, no, but this is definitely not going well. There's one more pallet in the back there. Two, three. Okay, okay. I've got a three gen around this devourer. Hopefully, I can protect it. I do not want him to run towards her. Yeah, I don't know why I went for that. That was just a bad idea in general. like tenacity. Oh no. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that's some real shit. <laughs> they can't even buy me if I do this. She's found it. Okay. Now the drop leg knife sheath is going to come and clutch here. Never mind. She just went down anyways. No, not again, not again. Dude, how is that an angle? I can't look away. Where does he fucking come from? Why is she broken? This Felix must have background player, because I couldn't hear him at all. What am I might do? Yeah, you're not slick. I can see you.
What the fuck? Okay. Well, that was interesting. No! Fuck. Bro, like one second too late. Man, at this point it's too late to matter, but it just would have been cool to keep it. Hopefully it takes a while to find the hatch because I want to get my archon done. Oh boy. Is it gonna open? No? Okay. Great. Well, no archive I guess, but that's fine. Damn, I didn't think that Yun Jin would have enough time to cleanse that. But she got unhooked after, or like, uh, slightly before I started morying Felix. And the totem is like 16 seconds. I don't know. I just didn't think she would have time to do that. He's a nice guy who builds. Got, um, Jolt, Barbecue, Play With Your Food, Lethal Pursuer, and then the Walleyes and Philly. This is a simple, well rounded build that isn't meant to turn many heads but it'll still give you enough substance to work with and rewards more skilled players for cleaner ambushes. All right, Eerie of Crows. So on lethal, uh, no, we're not over here, we're not over the others. All right, awesome, nice. Got her foot too. Drop this pallet. Cool. We're gonna go find Renato. I think Renato's over here. I need to find the obsession. Obsession. There he is. He dropped the pallet for me too? What a gentleman. That is so Ah! It's gonna make this difficult for me to start my chase, isn't it? Yeah, he is. In the locker? I lost him. Well, now that I've wasted a lot of time setting up play with your food. The slowest fucking way possible. Ah! 
Stack. Well, how kind. Ooh. Nice one. Chase already ended on Renato. Unfortunate. Messed that up quite a bit too early. Ooh! Save the stack! Let's go. Damn. Dude, I'm fucked. I've wasted a lot of time trying to set up play with your food just throughout the game. The stack and stack, the stack. Alright, now I leave. I think I'm gonna have to tunnel Yoichi. We are too far into the game without any results. Oh. Yes! <laughs> Save the stack! We are so stacked savers right now. Oh, they're even going to let me reuse the hook. Okay. Well, I guess that lost me the stack. But whatever. Yeah, she sucks. Is she also dead on hook? Oh, 
Oh, there he is. Perfect. It's back to. Maybe juicing soon. Oh yeah. into the shack. I wonder if Lori is still nearby. I'm almost done making the video, and I still don't have a generic builds video done for Nostromo because I haven't. I have had Ghostface Prestige 100 for so long, I haven't spent any points on him in ages, and so I, I haven't spent points on him since way before Alien came out. And so I don't have any of the map offering for Nostromo. Like I don't have the key card or whatever it is. So I still haven't even gotten to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Teabagging. Lol. We have Jolt, Ruin, Save the Best for Last, Barbecue with Walleyes and the Journal. Another simple and well-rounded build that's designed to get you value on its own, as long as you are making use of your perks. Bad am. Fuck. I hate this map. All of them. Every bad am is shit. And I got a bad totem spawn that's right next to a gen. Best totem spots are ones where they're not going to find it unless they're really going out of their way to find it. Oh damn, everyone's here! Oh yeah, it's Dak City, baby. Damn, two of these like car loops right next to each other is crazy. This is the obsession, so I kind of just want to get my stock up. Get live. Okay, great. Ah, no! I don't want to waste my 99 and hit him here. Wow, he's lagging like hell. This Jeff is actually laggy as fuck. He's literally stuttering as he runs! Dude, what the fuck is this guy's ping? Dude! 
Dude, the auto aim is fucking me up. That was just, dude, okay. Dude, I try to lunge, the auto aim tells me I've hit him already and ends my swing. Then he just teleports because his ping is nine trillion. How anyone's connection can be this bad, I have no idea. Dude. He's fucking teleporting. There we go. Finally. Holy fuck. They still haven't found Rowan. So that's good. It wouldn't surprise me if they did. So. That's ruined. I'm Leon on this, and he's going for the save. Yep. Ah! Well, rip the stacks, but that's fine. We lost two, and we could have lost four by marking him. So he said, wow, a hook is literally just like out in the open like this. I haven't seen a hook just spawn in the middle of nothing next to that gem before. Someone's on this, I can tell. Yeah, it's the laggy ass Jeff. Pop it. This might be the laggiest survivor I've ever seen seen a lot of bad ping killers. This might be the laggiest survivor I've ever seen. He has calm spirit, I think. Leon. No, I'm gonna lose my stacks again. Or at least it'll be a quick down. Oh, there's Zarina. I would like to go for you more. Because you will give me my juicy stacks. She got stuck on the fence. Jeff is back here.
Oh, Leon let go. Now I can't get these stacks. And now Ruin's gonna go away. Oh! Got a fifth right before he died. Nice. Yep, the real went away, so. At this point, obviously, Ruin's already done the damage it needed to. Five on save the best for last is not that bad. Yeah, you, I, you could be stuck with worse. I think Jeff is in the school basement. Jake Park is here. Is he gonna go for this window? Does he have five? No, that really doesn't help him. Serena die? Well, I guess I heard Jeff in the basement. Okay, well once I started chasing Jake, it looks like he tried to run, but he was just too late. Dude! I think I heard it open as well. Yeah, okay, it's right here. Dude, he's so laggy. He's so laggy. <laughs> Bro is actually fucking playing on the McDonald's hotspot. We've got our meme builds. There's barbecue, floods, darkness, and lethal with the outdoor security camera and Olsen's journal. Ghostface has proper aura reading add-ons. So you can run those on top of four aura reading perks and have a very funny meme build. Oh yeah. This is an amazing map to be doing this build. I didn't even play an offering. Did they play an offering? Nope. This is great. All right, I see all four of them on lethal. There's no distortion, which even if they had distortion, I've got so much aura rating, it would shoot through their stacks so quick. All right, it's one good 99. And I saw Yoichi apparently for a little bit. Oh! Where is he? He's there. Oh. Torio's right here. Oh. Well, that's the outdoor security camera. You get a mark down and that happens. No, I can't go there. Okay. I don't want to get that pallet dropped on me, but I would like these bloods. So just to explain the build, I've got barbecue, which is going to show me their auras after I hook. Darkness, which is going to show me their R's when I check lockers. Yep. Uh, I've got floods to show me their R's when they unhook. Ah! 
the outdoor security camera add-on shows me their add-ons when I down marked survivors. I shows me their auras. No, no, no. She's gonna do the thing, dude. I was hoping I could get like an easy ambush on her, but she just came in and did the fucking thing. There's a really broken perk combo right now that just really sucks to fucking play against. Any healthy survivor can just instantly pick up a down survivor for free. Uh, and it gives them endurance when they do it. Which is just really cringe. And it's probably going to get removed pretty quickly. But whatever. And Lethal Pursuer shows me their R's at the start. And it also has the effect where it lengthens every other aura reading thing by two seconds. So it's it's very, very good. She had Deli. Okay. And maybe she has second wind. I don't think she got an unhook. Yeah, it must be second wind. But who did she heal? I'm not sure why she's broken then actually. Oh, I didn't want to mark him. I just kind of just wanted to have it for later. Okay. He's not dumb. You see that other aura? That's the journal. Oh, I got him. That's the journal. Whenever he vaults, any mark survivors that do a rushed action are going to get revealed. Yeah, she must have had second win, but I'm not sure where she got that. Oh, she got it from for the people that come off the ground. She got it for free. No, don't reveal me! You fuck, I wanted Bill. I need to get my power back. This is where having, like, wall eyes would be really good. She all the way on that far gen? Yeah, she is. Okay. Damn, instant unhook. It's fine. I need to stop this gen anyways. That's journal value. You don't get that. Vittorio did not use this time to leave. He's going to have this god pallet on the backside. But that's good because once this god pallet is down, it's going to mean I can take the next scourge behind me. Still here? Yuichi is so far away. I just looked up. There he is. Bill's gonna unbreakable underneath her. I do not want that to happen. I'm gonna pick him up while I carry. I did that. Uh, it's not because I want to hook Bill. I actually can't hook Bill anymore. Uh, what I wanted to do is make it so that her unhook timer 
would stop progressing. When you stand close to survivors like that, they can get unhooked progress and eventually unhook themselves. But uh, it doesn't count towards the progress uh, at all if you're carrying another survivor. So I just wanted to make sure that she can get that. Oh, Bill's health? Yeah, I noticed that. Vittorio went to go steal her medkit. Alright, nice. Oh. Okay, I tried to greet that hit thinking the pallet would be there. But the pallet was on the other side of the offices. Perfect. Ah, oh, it wouldn't let me get my lean in on time. They must not both be on this gen then. Okay, apparently they're neither of them. Alright, well. Now I've got floods. They might think that I'm on my way. Here we go. I should have ran around the other side of the pallet, to be honest. Instead of trying to camp it there. Oh, both of them.
got that on hook. Well, I guess it's not like I can get anything out of my foot anyways. Joey ah! G really needed to be looking where he was going. Got Dragon's Grip, Coup de Gras, Discordance, and Overcharge with the Walleyes and Philly. You put Dragon's Grip on agenda that they were two stacking, so it's going to have a lot of progress. They're going to want to come back to it so that it doesn't lose it to Overcharge. And you're going to hide around a corner undetectable for them to stop it. And then you pop out with Coup. You've got this massive lunge for a very funny down. It's not really a great build for winning, but you can farm funny clips if they don't realize what you're doing. Fields, kind of a shitty map for this, but this is the overcharge build with Dragon's Grip. I don't care if I lose my power, I kind of want to use it. Ah! I've got it charged, dig up again for next time. So I know there were two people, I'm gonna pretend not to find her. Now, here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna kick the gen. See if they come back. All right, I don't think they're coming back. Got that. Yeah, I wasn't fucking trolling. How <laughs> to use this shit, Berg? Just been able to go for it, but oh well. Oh. Okay. I didn't think that was there. God, this fucking corn. You can't stalk through it for anything. Dropping that is kind of a terrible idea. Hopefully, she catches that. She touched it. She has calm spirit though.
now they at least know about kill. This gen is currently getting fucked by overcharge. That's good. I got my dragon's grip for next time though. Dude. Yeah, I should have waited a little bit longer. No. Ah. She's already fucking healthy. I'm already healthy. She's still healthy, I mean. Oh. Alright, well. She was canceled, I guess. Free pallet for me then. I wonder if I can get this with kill. <laughs> yes, I can! Dude! to hit anyone with dragon's grip. That's so sad. At least he got me overcharge value. I wonder if they'll hit this dragon's grip. Or wait nearby, maybe they'll show up.
and then Thrilling Tremors, Dead Man Switch, Corrupt Intervention, Deadlock. With the Walleyes and the License, this stacks a fuckload of gen blocking together to hopefully slow the game down constantly. The Driver's License unique ability to essentially pop and deadlock a gen for you for free as long as you mark them on it is very very good and a very strong effect but it's honestly very rare that you will get value from the driver's license but it is a very cool add-on and as far as i know there aren't any other killers that have an add-on like this so i think it's still cool to try Alright, this is the gen blocking meme build. I don't know how well this is gonna go. This build's not really that good. But. Hopefully. Oh, yeah, as you can see, that's the driver's license. Laggy on my first hit. Well, I got my down so early. But I basically got no value to come. We're gonna see thrilling tremors here pick up it's going to show me what gens are being worked on Can gen in that one okay hold on all right bothered them there let me come back here and bother these guys yep perfect perfect That is a delayed ass stun. Thrilling value here. Main gen. Both gen in the main building. Okay, well that black back one is gonna get blocked with deadlock. Okay, that is actually a very long slow. <laughs> Not even gonna lie. He doesn't even make that. Over there is being worked on. No. Okay. He used his sprint burst just to end up at a less safe pallet. I'm not super sure what this guy's doing. Nice. 
Alright, I'm just gonna have to leave that. Travers was on cooldown. Okay. I don't think any gens are being worked on. Could be in this locker then, I guess. Yeah. That's probably quick and quiet or something. you I guess I don't know I mean the game is basically one at this point and I think that tap was working on that jet yeah he definitely was oh found him As you can see, this gen, this oh, oh yeah, deliveries. This build um, just basically cycles your gen blocking over and over, and it honestly gives you a good amount of info as well with uh, thrilling tremors ah! and dead man switch. I can help you figure out who's looking ah! where. This is pretty useful. Then obviously you've got the driver's license, which is kind of niche. You may to get it off twice, which usually you honestly only get it off like once in a game. But it didn't really get us any like crucial saves, but it can. It does have the potential to, which is very helpful. But I don't know. It's it's not an amazing app. Um, if I was gonna play like a million games with this, I'm sure I could get a game where I got a ton of value out of it but you will be hard pressed to find value. I'm just using the first game I play with each of these just so that it's like very concise. I don't wanna just keep farming every game and then find like the perfect game on every map or the perfect game on every build. Cause I feel like that will misrepresent the strength or utility of the build. And yeah, these guys were all super high for C. They had a lot of items, damn. I'm not going to go over the basics of chasing as an M1 killer and every mind game you can pull off as an M1 killer because this would be the longest video ever, but I am going to go over some chase tricks that you couldn't do specifically as Ghostface on most maps. 
more map specific tricks i'm going to leave to the map segment or i'll break down the map pool and what is good and bad and what are some good consistent spots you can get uh to stock on every map there are a lot of techniques that can change the way you chase because of his signature ability to crouch effortlessly he can make himself smaller around around a lot of mid-height loops that can make him impossible to see and force a pallet that would be at least a little safe into a pallet that can be a 50 50 especially given that ghostface typically will not have his red stain since chances are you are undetectable which is easy in chase now that he cannot be revealed by marked survivors certain tiles like these rock tiles on eerie of crows are the perfect example for this but you can do this in a lot of places another one of ghostface favorite tricks is to activate night shroud with no intention of stealth you can lose your red stain on command by doing this and it's a strong mind game that can win you a lot of 50 50s or if a survivor is camping a red pallet they're probably going to drop it off of seeing the red stain but a killer who is moonwalking will still have to turn around and swing, which means the red stain is going to be there, but this is going to be a very delayed warning. If a survivor is running from you and can see a red stain, they know you're not in your power, they're going to be waiting specifically for the red stain. They're hearing the chase music, not the tear radius, remember this. So once you pop your power, they get no indication that you've popped your power. And you can swing around a corner onto them if they're on the pallet without giving them any warning at all there will be no red stain they won't even know that they're not looking for a red stain and it can get a lot of downs just by catching a survivor's off guard with their reaction time you can also use this in a very funny way to mind game shack even if the pallet is down this is pretty rare but it has worked and does work sometimes it's very funny if it works if you're chasing a survivor shack and they go past the window of the pallet you can sometimes activate your power and vault the window if they're not prepared and don't see the red stain, you can get into shack as they've jumped the pallet for a free hit around the pallet. Obviously, it's a good idea just to break the shack pallet immediately anyways, but the point is you have options. This trick will also work if they're running the other way to the non-pallet side. You can also try double vaulting to really throw them off. Normally, if a killer double vaults, it's very obvious to see because of the red stain that projects past the window, and killers are also just usually very big. But for Ghostface, he has neither of those problems, and he can pull this off. Olsen's journal also works really well with this because if a marked survivor hops the shack window for five to seven seconds, depending if you have lethal pursuer, and you can decide to hop the window or hop back, the point is you don't want to be spending this time hopping the window or hopping out if you're just going to end up mind gaming yourself and losing distance. For this segment, I'm just going to go over every map and rate them all they are good or bad and how successful you can be on every map i'm also going to play a full match on most map using the same generic build so you get an idea of how the map is played for macmillan auto haven and coldwin i'm not going to play all of them just because they all have a lot and some of them just play very similarly and would just make the video even longer than it already is macmillan even has 10 it has the five that i'll talk about and it has five variants one for each of them so this would just be a lot of unnecessary information and I want to keep this video very information packed so that you're not just watching it without learning anything. Suffocation Pit. This center area is a great place for you to get your stalking done as it has a lot of very congested tiles together and while this might be tricky for a lot of killers as these tightly connected loops can form very strong setups, a particularly sneaky ghost face can try to turn this around into a very dangerous area compared to the mostly open surroundings. Pay attention to which side of the map survivors are on, as this map is shaped like an hourglass and lends itself to 3 gens, so controlling that middle area is important. It's an alright map. Groaning Storehouse Won't lie, there is not much a Ghostface can do on this map in terms of map specific tricks, apart from the windows in the main building. Only good fundamentals will save you here. It's very big, very open, very safe, and it's got an irregular shape, and is very hard for a Ghostface to deal with. Ironworks of Misery. This map is super open, but that's fine because the main building has these broken out glass panels way up high that you can stalk through for some good 99s early. Make sure to break the door up top while you are here. Overall, this is a fine map. Cold Tower. This map is very small and balanced and honestly kind of a boring map. There are not many map specific tricks in this map for any killer. It's small, little building on one side, shack on the other, just play well. Shelter Woods. Since the Skull Merchant chapter came out, this map is significantly worse for Ghostface. It's still incredibly big and open and hard to sneak up on anyone, 
but now there's also a main building that Ghostface can try to use, and it can get you value, but it's not going to be very successful against better opponents who are just going to use the strong vaults this building came with a lot. I really don't like this map when I get it. Auto Haven. Azarov's resting place. Basically, this is suffocation pit, but with a green coat of paint as well as the center area is not quite as safe as it is on suffocation pit. Control the middle and stock from the sidelines. Make sure you've got your 3 gen. You can mostly ignore one half of the hour hourglass. Blood Lodge. You can stock through the planks on main building and from the balcony of main building, even having a lean spot where the balcony ends. But be careful that the survivors don't reveal you, as you can be seen easily on the balcony. If the basement is in main building, you can lean into it and get quite a bit of free downs. Other than that, it's a fine map. Gas Heaven. This map used to be the worst map in the game for Ghostface because these car blocks really inhibit his pathing, which is a crucial part. Now that those are reduced, it's slightly better, but the main building is still very bad for him. Before, if someone was working on main building gen, they were in a dead end, you could trap them in and mark them. Now you can't really do that depending on how the building generates, and that center pallet and windows are just very good. Make sure you kick the door here ASAP. Wrecker's Yard. This map doesn't even have a main building, just a shack in the middle. Good fundamentals will mint when you this map. It's not very safe for survivors, unless they get God RNG, which is pretty rare. This is also a good map for you. Wretched Shop. This map is similar to Wrecker's Yard, but it will have a main building that is guaranteed to spawn with a generator and one of two windows. If the window by the breakable wall is the one that spawned, you need to break that wall. If the opposite window spawns, don't kick the wall, or it's going to make the main building stronger as the window will have a shorter path to jump, and it adds a second escape route to the building. Cowshed. Certain loops on Coldman in general are able to be seen through but not stocked through, which can make crouching around some loops in general pretty bad. The filler pallets with the bales of hair are also very safe, and so are the ones with the wheelbarrows, so just force them down and kick them. The corn on all Coldman maps are very finicky. It can be hard to stalk or reveal in it. Crouching can actually help a little bit with stalking through the corn, just because at the bottom of the corn, it's not all the way there, it's just the stalk. But you're going to have to play around with the angle. It's very annoying to stalk through. The corn just sucks. Oftentimes they can reveal you through it, but sometimes they can't, and then they're going to get mad about that, and then you're going to be mad you can't stalk through it. But it did, like it just sucks. The corn just sucks. Cowshed is not a map with that many tricks. It's mostly just a fundamentals map. But it's also a bad map for you just because there's a lot of good safety. Even after the nerf. But it's not unbearable since the nerf. Abattoir has been reworked so these guardrails are less likely to spawn. But something many people may not know is that any killer can M1 directly over them for easy hits, and it makes survivors very mad when you do it because 99% of them don't know you can. Abuse this every time you can. Overall not a great map, but could be worse. Rotten Fields, this map is really bad for you. It's mostly corn, it's very big, it's easy to reveal you and it's hard to stock with the corn. Uh, you have no mobility, so you are going to struggle getting from gen to gen. This is, very, this is pretty bad. Thompson House. Make sure to kick the walls at main building and you can stock on the balcony while you're there. Another very boring map, mostly open and corn near the middle. Pretty bad for you, I don't like this one either. Torment Creek is a very big map, but it has a, a mid-height middle and you can mostly crouch through that with the tiles at the side for proper stealth. You can stock through the panels on main building to get easy downs almost entirely unseen. Make sure you kick this door next to main building due to the size and safety they can generate. This map ranges from fine to bad. Rotus Pen. Depending on the way main building generates on Father Campbell's Chapel, it can be either very weak survivors or a near infinite even if you break all the walls. You need to recognize which is which and play accordingly. It's also a good place to lean out of windows and such. The carnival area of the map is very weak after about two or three safe pallets are broken and can generate very tight three gen scenarios. It's even sometimes on a hex totem or hook, which could give you an unbreakable devour hope in a best case scenario. This is a fine map. Disturbed Ward, it's a huge map, but it feels very manageable. There's a lot of safe areas around the map, but these areas do also give you great opportunities for stealth and markdowns, especially at the main building. There are many crazy angles you can hit from the main building, too many to even showcase, so play around with it. I like this map. 
Swamp. Grim Pantry, just stay away from the main building to be honest. There's a lot of reusable safe vaults on main that combo into safe pallets that can force you to deal with the windows again. If you get an ambush down at main, sure it's a good place to stalk, but don't let yourself fall into being a chase killer. Ghostface is not going to win a chase in a good amount of time here if your opponent is good. Shackside is way less safe, and even the bottom of main is way less safe once you get a few key pallets out of the way and deplete the dock of its pallets. That's much easier. There will be nothing really to stop you on the other side of the map. The swamp grass can give you good cover and the dock is a good place for you to stalk from, as well as the large rocks and shack and the little building off of the side. There's a lot you can do on this map as Ghostface, but I don't like it because fuck swamp. Pale Rose. Very similar to Grim Pantry. Just try to deplete things shack side and play over there. However, the main boat on this map has not many reusable vaults, unless one of the pog logs generates right next to it. I also don't like it because fuck swamp. Red Forest. Mother's Dwelling, very, very large map. The largest map horizontally in the game. You can try some stuff at main building, but honestly the map is so big, you have to go elsewhere. The only saving grace is that the map is darker than quite a few. Bad map. Temple of Purgation, very manageable map. There's quite a few safe fillers, but not many reusable strong windows, which means you can deplete this map rather quickly. As well as the main building has a lot of opportunities for ambushing by leaning out of those like side vents in the main building. It's a good map. Addenfield, this map is super huge and open. You can use these houses to stalk and then try to push them into the middle, where once you get rid of a couple key pallets, it's a massive dead zone. But try to stay away from these houses. These houses have a lot of reusable strong vaults that are just going to waste a lot of time. Depending on the house. Some houses are going to be stronger than others. And you're going to need to be able to recognize which houses are stronger. Houses like House of Pain. These are very strong houses. They have two strong pallets in them. Some, like this kind of balcony house, is not very good. So you're just going to need to know. Larry's Memorial Institute. This is almost ideal for Ghostface. Indoors map. Indoors maps make the stealth incredibly potent as well as offering you a lot of opportunities to stalk and lean and get great downs. This is a great map. I love seeing this one. Springwood. There's five versions of this map, and honestly, I don't know how much uh, about they generate, because whenever I get this map, I spend the next 15 minutes zoned out, not really trying. There's some things you can do with the tall hedges and school basement, but honestly, sometimes this map just generates in the most overpowered way, where you've got like five pallets connected to shack and then shack connects to the house and then the house connects to house of pain and that can connect to the school and you've got the safe pallets in the school you've got two sh unsafe on the outside it's just so rough i hate springwood got gideon meat packing plant this is a pretty bad map for most killers because of how cramped the bottom floor is which makes it difficult to use a lot of killer pallets this is a pretty bad map for most killers because of how cramped the bottom floor is and because of how many safe pallets there are on this map. On the top, it can be hard to get hits. On the bottom, it's hard to use your power. It's an indoor map, so you have the same benefits as Larry's, but this map really highlights how Ghostface is not a chase killer. It's got much more safe pallets than Larry's, so you are going to need to play this stealthier. It's going to punish you more if you get sloppy and start going on long chases because those chases will really start to drag. Orbund is a super open, super bright, super big, and essentially everything a Ghostface doesn't want. Thankfully, you can get some good stalking done from the balconies here and try to use the main building. The openness means that there are not many super safe areas, and the ones that are are kind of near the edge of the map, so that's good. It's kind of a bad map. Yamaoka has the family residence. Both the Yamaoka maps are pretty balanced. This one is worse for you just because it's a bit more open. There's not really anything to this map but fundamentals. There's the Sanctum of Wrath. This map has a huge blockage in the center, which makes it definitely better than Residence. You can stalk from the main building and use the hourglass shape to control the flow of the map. If there's three people on one side and someone hooked on the other, you can camp the middle, make sure nobody gets past without actually camping the survivor. It, it's good. It's like Azarov's or Suffo. You just need to make sure you control your side of the map. Dead Dog Saloon. You're going to need to kick the three doors at main building and whenever you get a chance, the shack wall. And then just try not to chase in the main building and you'll do fine. Main building is good for stalking. 
Not chasing. Don't go there. There's also a lot of other doors on the other side, the like kind of town side of the map. There's also a lot of doors you're gonna need to kick there. This map is honestly door kicking simulator. But once you kick all the doors, it's very good for you. I mean, you don't have to kick all the doors, just kick the doors when you need to kick the doors. And you'll do fine. Midwitch. This is Ghostface's best map. Make sure you're aware of where floors can change and which way. Don't screw up your pathing. Even in the hallways, you can hide behind the lockers and other debris and lean around them. If you do this, you can get uh, a lot of safety from being revealed, even in the most open part of the map besides the courtyard. If you want to stalk the courtyard, there's places upstairs that overlook it, and you can lean around it to hit the whole courtyard. Try to prioritize whatever floor has more generators left to complete on it. Ideally, one floor remaining will have all three gens left, either upstairs or downstairs. RPD. This map is bad for killers, but actually good for you because it is indoors, although it does have a good amount of safety and is very big. Out of the indoor maps, this is the worst one for you, but still good. You are going to need to know the layout, which can be a bit tricky, but as someone who has played both Resident Evil's 2 and 3 extensively, it's pretty easy for me. You can start from the balconies and main for some good ambushes. Also, be careful with this pallet that spawns on East Wing. You can't fit through the door and go around this pallet without it vacuum stunning you. If it gets dropped, you will always get hit by it, so just eat it. This helicopter area is very safe in general until you break a few things. Another pallet you should always eat is this outside pallet. Run it clockwise so that if you get stunned, they can't really get that far. And that goes for both west and east. Eerie of Crows is a very bad map for Ghostface. It's very open, very safe, and very bright. Make sure you break these doors at main building. Even this top one if you have time to spare, like maybe you hook someone up there. If you hook someone up there, you should go break it. Other than that, I would just leave it because most people aren't going to use it. It's also just a nice place to stock from. You've got these nice balconies up top. It, it's just very rough. I don't like it. Garden of Joy. This is currently the worst map for Ghostface. It's very bright and open and extremely safe. There's not really anywhere in the map that's unsafe apart from like obvious edge maps. The best idea would be to stay roadside and not near main building because at least you can break these paths and it's somewhat safe. Compared to the main building that has the strongest windows in the entire game. These windows are crazy. Honestly, you just don't want to deal with them. Shattered Square. This is also a bad map, but it just got nerfed into being kind of a good map. But it just got announced that they're buffing it again. They're increasing the amount of pallets from 8 to 18, and I haven't got a chance to play on it yet. Um, I don't know, I guess, where this is going to be. My gut tells me this is going to be pretty bad, but... I mean, they rearranged the things on the map so that it would be less open as well, so it's easier to stealth around on. Hopefully, this is a fine map, but it's probably going to be bad. Toba Landing. This is really just a whatever map for Ghostface. There's a lot of stuff blocking vision that could block you from stalking, but also getting revealed. So a lot of your stalking is going to be close range, which is fine, I guess. It's not a super safe map, and there's not many loops, so it's all right. I don't mind Toba Landing. Nostromo Wreckage, this is the newest map in Dead by Daylight, and this is one of the more killer-sided ones just in general. There is really not much safety on this map, and you can stalk almost anywhere on the map, but the far side from the safety of the ship. This is a pretty good map. Alright, this is a wretched shop generic builds, is it? Oh, I'm dumb. This is Azeroth's. I have a bad habit of not paying attention when it reads the map name. I know Vittorio's on Shack Gen 2. Damn, I got around the corner. How does it still reveal? Oh, uh, let me go shack then. Interrupt this gen. Nice. She has calm spirit. Fuck it. No, that's actually so bad. Wait. He doesn't make it anywhere. Oh! Oh. Never mind. This is great. Yeah. Mm. 
This side of the map has four gens. There's no mid gen this time, which is weird. But I think I'm definitely going to use that. He knows I can't hit him. Adam. Hey, Adam. That is just bad pathing. He he curved for no reason. There is zero reason to curve. If he runs in just a straight line, he makes that pallet for sure. Why is Adam broken? Is the void open right now? No. I guess maybe he had second wind. Or maybe deliverance. Oh, I guess deliverance. I wasn't paying attention. Fuck, well I lost my gen on this side of the map. So I've only got three on this side. Instead of four. That's still good. Better than the two on the other side. At least. Pallet, free pallet. <laughs> Fuck, dude, Jake got in my way. Maybe I can still get him, too. Hide it mid face. And I won't expect it. She's broken. Oh, oh she's probably in the point. No, fuck, she's got endurance now. Fuck! Out of way. Shit. 
damn. Look how close that is. There's not even a gap. I'd love to get this pallet out of the way. This is like the last pallet left. Which would mean me like just completely dominating the side. Instead. I don't want to run out of hooks in that back corner too fast. I guess I could just leave them on the ground, but I don't really want to. That's kind of boring. Hello, Shaq. Fuck. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention at the start. This is Springwood or Badam of the generic build on every map. And I think she's already seen me. I'm gonna see if I can stalk this person back here first, whoever it was. Well, that's basically perfect. That's something you don't see every day. <laughs> what the fuck? Grab her off that gen. And this is just about the strongest early game um, I could have asked for. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm not gonna lie, I misclicked. I hit left instead of right. That's right. Spend time with these.
probably should break the other wall as well. Hattie got stuck. That's two for one. She's still here. See if I can find Jill. Oh yeah, it is about to be over. Alright, well, maybe not over. Alright, I take the double back. Everyone has already been up. They're gonna lose this heal. Sloppy. Oh yeah, that's why, okay. I realize now I made a mistake when I grabbed Kate. Maybe not a mistake, but it's just a hole. When I grabbed Kate, I didn't apply Sloppy to her. So. Now Jill's lost her heal progress. Oh, I'm about to get blinded. I remember that Jill had a flash out a bit too late. But I managed to start hanging her before that, so I'm all good. I'll take it then. think I can get flash from here. Yeah, I can't. Oh. Jill is also in the void if I could find her. Got endurance. Uh, yeah, she did. Uh, Damn. Kate is also still here. Uh, yes. uh, All right, I'm juiced. You guys aren't really gonna gain anything from this because this is just Halloween event exclusive stuff, but I was just gonna let him go into the void and do nothing. She'll be out of the void now, but she's hooked. Oh. 
even nicer. Basement here? No. Oh, I probably can't hook her then. I guess we'll see how it pans out. But usually a basement is not down here. So whoever that goes down in the basement is not going to be able to get hooked. Yeah. Okay. I can't hook her if she goes down down there. I don't want to slug 4k obviously but if she's gonna just just sit in a spot where I can't hook her if there's nothing really I can do about it Yeah, three prestige 100s. I was very clearly in the wrong lobby. Jesus Christ. Right, that's two distortions in one lobby. I think I'm about to get this AFK <laughs> for free. Gotta be the work of two people.
you have a med kit? No? Alright, I guess I should have just committed to it. Oh. That just caught her. Fast though. Ooh, an AFK. That is crazy. Is that live? Like live to me. She's got a med kit solved. going to let her die. Ah, there we go. I think the thing will run out this door. Yeah, well, that was a pretty good cat, I guess. Oh, wow. I guess Fang had a syringe. Yeah, one of those crouchable loops. what toolbox she had because they had a lot of gen progress very quickly.
until we get a real game. I should note that on all of these maps, I'm just using the first game I play on whatever map, regardless of the outcome. Uh, unless it's like, just not even a real game. There are so many games where someone just lets go on hook right at the start that at this point it would be like I know I hear if I had to play a game like that you can get all that. Let's see if I can still get Yui. Yes, nice. She didn't run far at all. Really? Damn, I can't hear her footsteps. She might have light footed. follow you anyways. But certain perks like uh, light footed or iron wheel do make it a lot harder to do that. So, I mean, even though iron wheel is not really in a great spot, if you love blinding the killer, That was a closed wall. I was very confused. Oh, yeah. Spot because she already dropped all these pallets.
like I'm really dumb. <laughs> I don't know why she keeps doing that. This Nancy is like Prestige 90, I think. She must really think I'm some baby killer to be doing this. But I really don't expect a Prestige 90 to be that bad. The good thing about Ghostface's lean is that he can get out and look around angles that others wouldn't. Which means you can... I mean, obviously there's the stalking benefit from it, but there's also just an info benefit that you can see places from places. Eighty-four. Yeah, I don't know. I guess she was throwing. Bang did not have light footed. Huh. Maybe I'm just hard of hearing. I guess. Oh shit! Cow shed. Well, I guess it's good to get the worst cold wind out of the way. One there, three here. Hopefully they double this gen. Damn, the pumpkin blew my cover, bruh. This is just pal gem. I'm not respecting that. This Dwight is greedy as fuck. I don't know what he was doing there, but this Dwight hates dropping pallets, so I should probably make note of that. <laughs> That's my favorite trick. You lean, unlean, then relean it. Survivors oftentimes will just wait to check if you're still there, and then that gets you the rest of your stock for free. Uh oh, she's not taking the hit for him. Well, looks like you're not greeting your gen now either.
Damn, she made a whopping zero distance off that. Doesn't really matter because it's cow shed, but her padding there was pretty bad. No 399 <laughs> <laughs> I kind of have a 3 gen here. Not much safety. There's obviously Pig Tree, but... Once Pig Tree goes down... There's a real obstacle between me and... This dead zone over here. Thank you for walking into my field of vision. Thank you for doing that for some reason. Don't get stuck on that. That would be a terrible thing to get stuck on. Well, it looks like it's come to this.
I die? I did. Bro. I couldn't even fucking see him. Why does the car no only ever let you stalk through it when you don't want to? Oh, he's in the locker. What the fuck? Where did he go? I'm gonna have to watch that back. That's crazy. Dude, he's entirely gone. How the fuck did I miss that? It doesn't even feel possible. I heard him breathing and everything. That really doesn't feel real. Someone's in here, so I guess I'll say hi. Obviously, just gonna be a win, but this is like getting really boring. Just can't fucking find anyone. The dude, I did find just vanished. Well, I didn't mean to fully mark him, but that works, I guess. You know, maybe my brain just isn't functioning right after like eight hours of dead by daylight today. It's almost 1 a.m. I've been grinding this to finish getting all these maps recorded. Oh. Dude, I just have two more to do after this. I am so tired. And that's only slightly copium. I am tired, but I am also playing bad.
We're Mint Creek. There's another actually kind of interesting cold wind to showcase. Damn. Three distortions, I guess? Yeah, okay, they all spawn back here and not on John. So that's definitely a lot of distortions. Calm spirit, too. Video game. Damn. Ah, she's just gonna follow me, isn't she? Yes, okay. Ah! Holy fuck, stop following me. <laughs> At least she gave me a free pallet. Yeah, she's just getting whittled down on the stock meter. Eventually I'll get her, obviously. Dude, she won't stop following me. This is like the actual way that you kind of just destroy Ghostface. Because if you do this, he really doesn't have a power. She's just staying in safety and keeps revealing me. I'm going to try to lead her somewhere unsafe. Oh my god, that is so fucking, and she did the thing, dude, I knew she was going to do the thing, holy fuck, this Claudette is supremely annoying, That was too early. I was hoping to hit her through borrowed. Or not borrowed. We like the base kit borrowed. You know what I mean. Dude! Why is that a stun? I'm so far from the pallet. Fucking vacuum stun. Dude, 
good. There's so many pops in the main building. And they all just connect to the window. And I can't do anything about it. Thank God she's fucking terrible. If this Claudette was good and not just annoying, I think I would be in a really bad place. Why'd he get fast? Does he have dramaturgy or something? Second time he got fast is obviously a ghost. I don't know what the first time was. Find survivors impossible challenge. That's a free hit. That's a free pallet. What is this guy doing? It's a free down. What is he doing? Free shack pallet, oh no, not shack pallet. It's the uh, pig tree pallet, but it's still a god pallet in either way. I don't know why I started stalking here. I might just start stalking tap. This is a long wall gym, it looks like. No, short wall. I felt bad, dude. I'm fucking terrible. Dude! And she goes pal and she gets it. Dude, oh my god. I'm having so little fun. I, to be fair, I've been playing this game for over six fucking hours. At this point, I'm just so tired of grinding. I want to go to fucking sleep or something else. Just to do something else. I literally just have this and one more cold in the game. And I don't have to fucking play this game anymore tonight. This is usually a fun game. I've had fun in all the other matches except for like a very few. Just don't do what I do and play the game for like six hours straight and you'll probably be fucked. I'm probably going on seven at this point. It's just fucked. Uh, that's like a good advice for any game. If you play any game for long enough, you're going to stop having fun. So don't uh, keep playing. Take breaks when you do things. Don't be like me. I'm a bad example. Bad example of almost anything. Let me show you. Shift tap. 392 minutes this session, bro. <laughs> don't, don't do this to yourself. Don't be like me. Are you gonna go into that? No, you're not. Yeah, there's no chance. 
Kind of the annoying ass Claudette is dead. There really shouldn't be anything left to worry about. Just mop up, really. I saw a tap too, apparently. Hit a trick pumpkin. I hit a trick pumpkin. Man. Yeah, I don't care. You're going on the hook. My gates are pretty shit. He might be able to just literally leave right now. Because of how far the gate was from this. Damn. Yeah, he got very close. I mean, the gate was just so far from the hatch. That... Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't break that the whole game. It's pretty funny. Is he going back? No way, he's actually gonna get it. Wow, that's fucking crazy. Well. Yeah, bro, three distortions. Ugh. God, what an annoying game. 
Alright, and this is the generic build for Dead Dog. We actually got kind of a good spawn. All these doors as soon as we can. I think one distortion. That is a nasty ammo. I wish you would have let me lean. But that's alright, I guess. Originally, Ghostface's lean was client sided and much easier to do. And then they nerfed it by making it server side. Well, that's a bit suboptimal because I wanted to get my surge. But. Whatever. <laughs> Better than swinging. Maybe it's a fake. That would waste my mark progress. Oh wait. Ah! That works for me. Let's see if I can force this second stage. I've got this metal Very good. Why are you doing this one? Okay. Jane is off doing Chen, but she needed to be helping. This wins quite a bit. Bro, this Jane is really bad. That's unfortunate.
just gonna let her do whatever she wants until she's marked. And when she's marked, I'll start trying. Well. That vault mind game doesn't really work as well when the wall is broken. Just because the loop becomes so much shorter. And easily visible, like that you're vaulting. These doors here are all grab. So. This is generic builds, mother's dwelling. One, two, three. I think I saw the four. Yeah, okay, she's over here. She's on that side. Should be an easy 99. No? Okay. It has spotted me. It's fine. This should be an easy stock. Yeah, alright, nice. like to get a bit more out of that. Yes, perfect. Okay, this is the guy that I wanted. Okay, let me try and find you, Jin, instead. Oh, perfect. Exactly what I wanted from that. This is about to be giga value. This is about to be giga value. Never mind, not that giga value. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pretend a tunnel. I can hear the footsteps. They're definitely about to do something dumb to be altruistic. Anyone around? I guess 
not. <laughs> so having everyone 99 like this is mega value. Side. Nice, that's blood. Wow, that's a much longer loop than I thought it was. Honestly, with a death that early. Where the fuck is it? Okay. We're kind of chilling. Like, I'm not really going to sweat the rest of this match. We're good. Funny if she came out right in front of me. <laughs> oh no. That chandelier just blocked me so bad. I think I got every pallet at main building. Just, these are always going to be strong pallets. So. Which was just how many chained windows there are. I think if those hitboxes on the chandelier had been a bit nicer to me, I could have got her. That's all right. I see the point. 
they're just creating a situation where there's no possible way I could pick up Nancy. I know the gag now. This has got to be made for me. Yeah, she got calm spirit. Well, this is a pretty shit map. Um, so maybe I shouldn't be taking it so lax. More pallets to free drop, it was kind of over. Build your yip grows. I only see, uh, okay, I see three on lethal. So probably one distortion. Body blocked. <laughs> Who's here? They let white hit stage two for whatever reason.
Damn. I didn't get the reveal. Oh, she has off the record. Yeah, yeah, this you wait, Dwight. This you wait, Dwight. She has off the records. There's no reason for me to continue going with this hit. I'm just gonna let her go. Nothing. Boil over! Holy fuck. Come on. There we go. being stunned. The point is I just wanted to push her away from making shock. And then she got greedy. So. I was just waiting for that. She wasn't making any noise. I feel like she probably did something else. Yeah, she ended up Meg, I think. So. I don't know why I thought that, but.
head hard. Damn. She waited until now to use that. Garden of Joy. Yeah, it's a pretty shit one. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. Try to take this hit? She is. Alright, I got around her. Nice. Oh, nice. this happen. Oh, that was fast. <gasps> Alright, well. Maybe she has background player. I'm about to find out. Damn! Alright, and the pallet. Well, that was kind of a nothing pallet then. I get stunned by the flash anyways. I can hear you, H. I'm gonna fake this. I'm just gonna have to get it. Wait, what? What the fuck? I start to hook her and it cancels it! This is already a very annoying game. Now it's about to get a whole lot less annoying. Get her out of the fucking way. Damn. Oh, she has made for this. I mean, that's not really a surprise.
Dwight's gonna come take this hit. If he can, he also might not have to. Hesitate. Yep. She let go on hook. Good. I really didn't like playing against her. Sacrificed my chase with UA a little bit by letting her get distance to hopefully have one that doesn't really exist with Yoichi later. Where is she even gonna go? You should definitely not run that way after you get that stun. Thankfully she's pretty terrible, so she doesn't really do anything. <laughs> Running away was a bit too much to ask for her, I guess. As soon as the perks and maps aren't carrying, she kind of just fell over. at me. I couldn't find him, so I guess I'll just say whatever. Oh. Unbreakable? I guess. Get this pallet. Oh. Or you could just throw, I guess. I definitely needed to go down.
that's fine. That is definitely fine. I'm happy to waste my 99 on Yui. Get it on Dwight. Obviously just because Dwight is healthy. Is this the one with the pallet? No. Yeah, she doesn't make the god window. I was hoping I could get a grab, but that's fine. definitely will make that window, so I'm just going to go around the outside and take it anyways, yeah. The pallet's gone, so... Oh, never mind. Oh, I forgot, yeah, Dwight didn't drop it, he went down instead. What is he doing? If you drop that pallet, you should 100% be able to make another vault through that window. I think he wasted his time blinding me when I can just hear him. Pretty hard gates to patrol. I think he can still get out pretty easily. If he really tried. this angle here. No, okay. These are definitely pretty easy to patrol. With this angle being so strong. Is he really just going to decide to wait? I don't get why survivors do this. They're just going to go sit in the corner and wait for two minutes? 
may as well try to get out. At this point, there's no time to open the gates. Yes, heaven. This is um, probably the most challenging auto haven, so I'm glad that we get to show it. Applebee's gift card. Hey, buddy. Bye bye. That's just muscle memory. Wow, that didn't hit. Okay, well. Yeah, this is the window that really hurts. He's trying to take a hit for her, but he's not being very helpful. Come back for that flashlight save, buddy? Sitting over there is still 99. Oh no, please don't have time. He could have also sabotaged that hook. That would be really bad. That gen in there is almost done too. Oh shit. I'm at essentially one gen. I'm so dumb. I gotta pick up Meg. <laughs> Fuck. Well. Please don't. 
Thank God. Hey. the plan. I pretend to tunnel and Ace takes the hit. This window is so strong because of those like tiles and shit there. Like, tires and shit. Just can't really do anything. No gens. <laughs> I am at actually no gens. Yeah, and the other one's also 99. It's actually regressed a decent amount. Leon could definitely be on this far gen, though. This is where we just left him. It's not. Holy shit, really? That's actually awful. They got these gens done fast as fuck. I know they have multiple toolboxes. I wonder what toolboxes they have. Oh no. The gate is right next to them. I don't make it. I think I, do, I think I do make it. No, not anymore. Okay, I gotta turn around. I gotta turn around. I just pray. Oh no, he was. Oh fuck.
I doubt Leon is going to come and try to save this then. Yeah. Well, at least I didn't lose, but that's crazy. I'm going to need to see those toolboxes. They flew through every gen. I didn't even really go on any long, crazy chases. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense. We got the fucking double commodious socket swivels wire spool with the streetwise built to last hyper focus stakeout. Makes sense. If you leave Yui alone, the gen is done in like two seconds. Well. Gideon meat packing plant. This is the generic build segment for Gideon Meat Packing Plant. No? Okay. good pallets out of the way. She's being forced to run back to where she just dropped them. Oh, balanced. Okay. She just used her balance, so she's not getting that false dagger. This boil over is fucking intense.
Oh, that would have been funny though. Too, uh, to be honest. Maybe I'd try to get a bit more blood points out of the void event, but... That's kind of a temporary thing. field. Where is Vittorio? Where'd he go? There he is. Uh-uh. <laughs> 
I think he will expect me to respect Oh, no. I thought he would expect me to respect it, but... Who's dropping this pod? is crazy. I'm not even gonna lie. When I was new to the game, this is gonna be a little Easter egg confession right in the middle of the video for people who actually watch it, like all the way through. Or unless, or if you get lucky, I guess, and your ghost face this chuckles on Haddonfield. When I was new to the game, I would watch videos and what the best strategies were. And I heard someone say that it was best to pre-drop pallets against Freddy because his pallets might be fake. And so, when I was like super new, like totally baby survivor, I would load into games against Freddy and walk around the map pre-dropping every pallet. I'm entirely aware is not what they meant by that. But that's what I did. Same with Doctor. Like anytime people mention free dropping, or I always just thought they meant like drop the pallet like before the killer's chasing you, and not like before you're in the loop. And I probably wasted a lot of pallets doing this. Well, that's boil over, I guess. Oh, is, actually, is there actually not a hook on that like whole area of the map? That's fucking crazy. I thought he would go back to his gen to have progress from earlier.
Those are just pretty polar opposite gates. Wow, I can't, I genuinely have to go all the way to see them. Yeah, these are going to be like impossible to defend. She would have to get very unlucky to die here. It was a pretty easy thing to get out of. Definitely could have, actually break line of sight, so... There we go, that's why I was looking at Works quite well. Yeah. 
gonna kick this. Oh, Dwight started trying to kill himself on the hook. Okay. I'm not sure why he started to do that.
out on Finder, which is fine. This is generic build for Nostromo wreckage. Let me just say, this was the biggest bitch to get a map offering for. I, I see them all in lethal. But you guys are never going to understand how annoying this was to do. I, I already had him Prestige 100, right? So I didn't have the map offering that I needed because I hadn't spent points on him in ages. So I was like, well, I mean... At the start, I thought, well, I'm doing one on every map, so I don't need to play map offers at the start, because the first few times, I'm definitely not going to get duplicates that quickly. And the first time I played, I got Nostromo, but I forgot to record it, and so I couldn't use it, obviously, because I don't have it fucking recorded. Directly after that, directly after that, I'm like, well, shit. Like, I, I forgot it, obviously. And so... Um, and so I spent three and a half million points and I finally got one Nostromo offering the stress of loading in and just praying they don't play their own map offering or they don't play like a sack ward or anything is actually like massive like I had to pray for this This map is actually really pretty as well. I really like this map. It's also just good for Keller, but it is a very pretty map. You can even see the texture in the gloves. Usually these gloves look matte black. Very nice. God, I got her trapped back here. I don't know if she can even go anywhere. Unless I let her. Yeah, she's going down now. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, she knows she can't get down. I don't want to chase with that mean pallet. Alright, well, I guess if she's gonna come back. Okay, well, he's leaving the main pallet, so I'm just gonna go for him. That's a very good counter to survivors when they run flashlights. Uh, 
Oh wait, I think I'm forced to give him boil over value in here. This is not gonna be good. Wow, that's fast. Okay, he might have flip flop too. I can hear her footsteps. I expected her to fall. No! Oh, thank God. I'm not sure why she wasn't looking. Oh. All right. Well, if she wants to follow me around to so hearing Jan's. So that is totally fine with me. I couldn't lean. Oh, you know what? This is totally fine. <laughs> yep, and she drops it. <laughs> She's gonna teabag me? This is probably not a good time to do that. I'm about to slug your whole team because they're being altruistic. Everybody is here, nobody's doing gems. Dude, what are they doing? What the fuck are they doing? This is a terrible decision from everyone involved. Yeah, well... <laughs> what are we gonna do now? Ah, oh, fuck. Fuck. No, 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 no. Oh, there's a pallet there. Drop the power. Yep. Just a terrible idea. That pallet is very strong. Like, she definitely didn't need help. But everyone wanted to help. Also, I think Steve has flip flop. So I probably shouldn't pick him up until everyone else is hooked.
trying to do to Steve. If I can get him destroyed by the false dagger. Fuck, I fell. Well, that's not what I wanted. But, he's dead anyways. I think he's just sitting back here so that I can't hug him, which is fine. I mean, his bleed out is actually done, so I think I'll just wait. Unless I have a hook, but I'm pretty sure I have no hook and he's got boil over. Yeah, I have no hook. Alright, that's fine. I'm down to wait. this hook if he'll get close enough, but I doubt he will. Oh, I know what I can use this time to do. I might be able to finish my archive. If I get lucky. Oh, wait, it's open? Let's go. I need to claim the reward in two months. if I can mark this lone survivor who's currently urban evading. Yep, alright. That's a spring burst, I think. I'm gonna go see if I can bother these three. <laughs> that is not at all what she should have done. And obviously... <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. She wants to go for a CJ, I can tell. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. CJ. <laughs> ah, wonderful. Red light hide? Come on, CJ? You know you wanna you know you wanna see that. Okay. Oh fuck, dude, she has need for this. Obviously, but whatever. Unbreakable. <laughs> yeah, she thought I would respect it. I 
hope she does not buckle up. Nope. Okay. Cool. I might be able to make it, but I might also be double healing. Yep. to have been the other cave, right? Wow, that is a vacuum. All right, well. <laughs> I can't believe I got vacuumed by that other pallet. That fucking sucks. Not sure what this Kate was doing. Maybe she wanted to get a flashlight save or something.
Damn, how are they still getting these gems done? It's kinda crazy. This three gen is horrible. But whatever. This is Grim Pantry generic builds. I almost forgot to start recording it. Thankfully I remembered.
That is unfortunate. As long as I have my power, that's just not a safe pallet. I think she understood that. The rest of their team is in a very bad spot, to be honest. circle of healing. Oh, you have distortion. <laughs> Mark on Meg. That's perfect. They're not breaking me out. They really need to. That must be Rebecca healing her because I didn't see the healer. Oh wait, no. It was just a distance thing. It was barely out of range. Nice, that's a good value out of sloppy. But I'm not gonna let her get to the pallet. Everyone. 
one double hooked. Broken with breakdown. Uh, bro breakdown is a long time. Uh, uh, I'm gonna do this just in case she. Yeah, okay. Do that because just in case she doubles back, I can see it if I do it that way. is generic builds for you. Family residence. Part of Yamaoka. Maybe she doesn't realize. Oh. Yeah, she's gonna stay nearby, try to get the save. Doesn't know she's 99, goes down. Oh, he just used... Wow, that is a vacuum stun. He's about to get instantly healed, I think. No? Okay. The blight wore off and he didn't get instantly healed, so... Oh, he didn't get instantly healed. Maybe he has something that slows down his healing. I don't know, but that fucking sucks. Being forced to eat an iridescent instantly is never a good thing. I think she. Oh, never mind. I thought she was just gonna go try and fall for the pallet. But there is also a tile here. Ah! This 
made sure I was listening. Yeah, this is really bad. I mean, being forced to eat two items like that right at the start just makes everything so much harder. Thankfully, she let me have that. I might try to tunnel her, to be honest. She seems like a weak link, and I think that if I don't, I'm going to lose this game for sure. There's really already very clear presence. He's gonna have his sprint burst back. Yep, there he goes. Yeah, vault it. Yeah, and Shack Pod is already down. On the other side. Double back, yep. I think Bill's gonna be somewhere in here. Yep, there he is. Oh. Yes! She didn't get it. Alright. Never mind. <laughs> the Cloud at DC'd. She was Prestige 100. Yeah. Alright, never mind. You know, they had some strong items and some early gens. So, I thought they were going to put up a much better fight than what they did put up. I saw those scratch marks, but none other. So, 
I guess she was here, but I don't know where she's gone since. Bots have a habit of knowing where the hatch is before it spawns. She's probably like echo locating it right now. Oh. Yeah, I forgot how you can't mind game to me there. Wait, we weren't in chase. Yeah, like the bot is just gonna know when I'm coming. Even through the wall. How? Holy fuck. She gets like 9 million volts. Yeah, like... You see how sometimes these bots, they don't even need to have line of sight of you or your red stain. They can just sense you. Like, you just can't mind game the bot. If it's something like that, you can force it to vault and take advantage. But if it's safe, like a safe vault, um, they, you can never mind game them around it. It just doesn't work. that are more mind gamey like ghost says if you're like a nurse it, it doesn't matter at all but a lot of things don't matter if you're a nurse <laughs> yeah the prestige 100 clad at dc's that's kind of funny 16 seconds seconds. Okay, I thought so. I stopped seeing the blight effect on him, and so I thought it wore off. And I knew that the timer on refined serum was longer than the syringe, so I assumed he didn't have it, because I thought it wore off. But I guess it just hadn't gone yet. Alright. This is generic builds for the Pale Rose. One, two, three. Unless there's two on this gen, that's a distortion. <laughs> Which there might be, new term. Yeah, that's two. Uh, I, think, I think I saw a bit of her. Should have just given me a down like that. Okay, well I can see that heal just got interrupted. Oh, she got stuck. Is that hard? <laughs> Healing Dwight. I'm about to get sloppy butcher value out of this for sure. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah, if you notice, this tall grass really fucks with stalking. Okay, they got healed. They both healed at the same time. They tell me one of them is self healed. Obviously, because of sloppy butcher, you can't put 99 in or anything. I know, do I win? Oh. Probably really doesn't seem to care about taking hits. Even be sloppy. Bounce? Yeah, bounce. This no, this is not the strong log. Pelt is very safe. Even with a successful mind game like that. Oh. Ah! Well, I guess not if he throws like that. There's another pallet up there you can use. I did see Kate. I'm just gonna start my cooldown sooner. That's not happening. Gosh, she did the ghoul, so she just gets to take any free hit. Maybe would have been smart if you just had a bit more mechanical skill. Uh, 
bad as it get, pound and a half. But I can't let these pop. Oh, they have the funny log here. I'm just gonna have to eat three balls of it. Well, she played that just as badly as, badly as you can play that log. That could have hurt a lot more. Yeah, pretty close actually. They had just about all the gents they need 99. Yeah, have you noticed when you make those little slight movements? Don't move that way. You just want to turn your camera that way. Because it might produce maybe half a second of hesitation. And that's sometimes the difference. And if I didn't do that and she didn't make her little step back, I would definitely not have caught her there. She has balance. <laughs> Why didn't we see it the other time? This is RPD East for the generic builds. This part obviously plays very similarly to RPD West, but there's a couple tricks. I honestly find this version of the map to be much more engaging compared to the other one. Definitely disturbed us.
is about to be value. Alright, this pallet. I think it showed another one. This one you run on this way. Even if he's stunned right there, he's gonna have to run that way. It can be cut off super easy. I'll see if I can get some of this stuff with it later. He probably should have just ran. Prioritized the distance. is doing. Oh, again, that's... He's running that the wrong way. If he's going the other way, that pallet will get value every single time. This is a crouch full loop. I got him. Uh, Jake is He's already dead on hook anyways. Yeah, here's the important thing with this pallet. If you're coming in from this doorway, you can't slip around that way without getting hit by this pallet. This is the most consistently vacuuming pallet in the game. Why did I get slowed? I must have hit something. If I just swung, I would have had him, to be honest. Yeah, and because I didn't break that monster. This is perfectly fine for me. I mean, I kept this down. Nobody picked her up. I got rid of the two very important middle pallets. That pallet there and the desk pallet are always going to spawn. The desk pallet can spawn there or there. The stairs pallet is always going to spawn there. that close to running out of time in the void. Guess I'll have to do it next time, but that's alright.
ahead and do those haunts then. <laughs> No, Dwight is already doing that. Need to get at least two. Well, I saw him leave, but I don't care. Where's the scary guys? There we go. How did he throw that? Embarrassing. I really don't care about chasing Dwight around, but it's whatever. Ah! In these endgame chases, they're always very boring. You know you're gonna give, get them anyways. It's like, but it's just boring because they just drop everything they get to. You know. I, mean, I don't play, but it's not like they're doing that wrongly. This is when you get to the end of the game, you have no reason to be efficient with it to make the chases more boring. At least in my opinion. This is generic build on RPD West, I think it said. I honestly forgot immediately. Library? Yeah, it's West. Okay. Okay, no distortions. I think I need to stock in this guy. Just not gonna bother. I didn't check where the art par palette is. I'm not super sure, but. Alright, he's going down. Nice. Break this. 
this. on purpose that way once I get my power back I can mark him and he's gonna he's gonna give this to me very easily here How they work. Oh, wait. I think if he just runs in a circle and vaults this over and over, I don't think I can even do anything about it. Wait. Ah! I think his pathing was pretty bad as well, though. stayed in the office. You know, this is a good way to get this pallet out of the way. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a super important pallet to get rid of. Can I get rid of this? I guess not. I'm gonna go far though. Maybe the armory pallet. This is where I want to leave it. I got all the important pallets out of the way. That's a good enough exchange. Oh, almost. Nice. Oh, I forgot. I need to break that one up there. Breaking this one is super important.
not sure what kind of boon it was, but we did get rid of it anyways. Yeah, he went downstairs. I can't get down there quick enough. He's gonna be able to finish that very easily. Ah! Oh, Damn. I really thought he had that. Same side of the map as me. Yep. Well, I didn't mean to mark him, but whatever. And the OHE is up here. Gens have progress. Wait, maybe not that one. But both of those two had progress. Steve probably went back to his gen to try and finish it. No? I do see the scratches.
might have heard some on this guy. No, okay, I'm just hearing like the map thumping. Sanctum. Uh, okay, one there. Two there. Okay, we got one distortion unless there's two on this gen. Okay, well I just watched him. Oh wait. No, that is two. Stalking Bill, to be honest.
Damn, she is fast. Um, she must have made for this. Made for this, stacking with the unhook speed bonus. She beat probably like 110. That makes sense for how fast she was. You can see the power of just knowing who's on what side. Oh fuck, that was also nice. Just control that side. Right, if Bill goes into the void, I wouldn't be surprised. Now the AI is very good at revealing. You can reveal you from almost anything. Alright, well way to way to improve my point game. But I've got some crazy reveal clips from the AI that I'll probably play just to make up for the embarrassments of me saying it and then it not happening as soon as I say it. I don't really feel bad about slugging the bot because it's a bot and it doesn't have feelings. So I'm just going to leave it on the ground and chase the real human. how he has endurance after saving Fang. <laughs> Healing her should have... Oh. <laughs> I should have just waited a little bit more. She got totally stuck on me. Yeah, damn, she got body blocked to oblivion. She decides to come for the save. Not exit gate, I mean the um the hatch. Yeah, okay. Well they'd let go, so I'm just gonna try and kick some pumpkins. If I can. Thank you. 
sure if the programs are. Oh! What the fuck? She went to go to the basement. To, to start healing herself. Did she open the chest down here to get a med kit to start healing herself? Not have the chest. Wait. She picked up someone's med kit who died. It didn't have enough charges, then she lost it to sloppy, I think. Dude. What? This bot's fucking weird, man. Shelter Woods. I gotta do this. I'm, I'm only doing three of the five of each of these three original realms just to take like forever and unlimited 999 luck t tokens to do. And I got uh, dupe on Macmillan already. Got Ironworks twice. They don't notice? Oh no, she does. I think I can force this anyways. Right here, if you're in this situation and you're Ada, what you want to do is you want to definitely take the hit and run. Oh, fuck. I don't know why. I thought Pal was the other side. She isn't going to run Shaq at all. She just wanted to drop the pallet to drop it. Oh, that's a terrible decision. Dude! Does she know what looping is? Like, you can run around the pallet. You don't have to just drop it and leave. You can, you can loop it. Stalking the injured Ada. Great. Oh, there we go. I draw a DVD dick. Oh, fuck. She was in my periphery. <laughs> you know, for the sake of your own sanity. I wouldn't recommend trying to look for the DVD dick that this guy draws. I probably should talk about the map. I fucking hate this map. That is very big and open. It's just hard to stealth around in. The main building is fine. It's an okay place to sneak around in. But also, there's a lot of strong windows that are very reusable and recyclable. So, dude, she doesn't know what looping is. She actually doesn't know. Like, there was a pallet right there that's easily loopable. I didn't see her. I didn't see her though. LOL! Yeah, calm spirit. This is looking like a free down for me over here. A 
freebie. Oh, I got auto aimed. Fuck. Well, I guess I'll just turn around. No, 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 no. Top Ada has distortion. Oh, it's the baby one. Okay. Is there nothing out of that? Oh, wait, this was closer. Greeted it for what? They never expect that. <laughs> they will always expect you to fake it the first time. Oh. It's interesting. Where's the dickler? Oh, there they are. Well, you're certainly going down. Oh, she has buckle up. Buck. Well, perfect. Yeah, you can't get endurance again because she's already deep wounded. And this pal here is gone. So. Oh, there we go. Game over. that one like 2015 reddit meme it's like the like knight templar guy he's like herb degenerates like you belong on a cross there's not many things that i would call degenerate drawing dead by daylight born probably is one of them actually let me even that it is certainly one of them that is weird as fuck and if you do it, that makes you weird. Oh wait, they're both here. Oh, they're both here. I don't think I have a hook to put her on, so I might go get some void points. Ooh, wow. I might go get some void points. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Someone's already on it. Okay, I don't think I have time to hook the Ada, so I think I'm just gonna farm some points. I wish the yellow Mori was base kit. Once these guys die, I could just Mori her and not have to like wait this whole time for her to blow. Might be less boring for her too. It's also cool just to see the Moris. You don't really get to see them that often. I mean, if it's the last survivor alive, mooring them does not make a difference. They're already on the ground. It's whatever.
All right. Generic builds on Macmillan. This is a uh, suffocation pit, it looks like. Yeah, it is. I wasn't paying attention when we loaded in. In this map, it's very important to use this center well. I'll just try to demonstrate that. got altruistic and she got greedy she must have thought that I was going to respect the palette you can't respect ones like that when you're on a timer you get big pallets like this you just need to get them out of the way oh no well are they gonna unhook very nice too. Oh, Renato's here. Alright, well, let me just lose it. I'd like to have it when I need to for Renato. He's going to insta-heal himself, so... Stalking is more important. He used the Blight Serum to catch him. There's no point for me to chase that then. I do have a great reason to go for this though. I think Yoichi's gonna try to get a gangster. I see you, Yoichi. Maybe, does he have background player? Nope, he doesn't have background player. Okay. This is a giga throw from Yoichi. <laughs> I'd let Renato have a lot of distance, but I think I could still probably catch him. Oh, did he just go void? He definitely just went void. Oh, they, oh he's going to get the endurance, and then I can't do anything about it. Yeah, even though he's marked, I can't do anything. Because he can just tank the hit. I 
think his endurance might have ran out. Ah! Yeah, it did. Okay, nice. I hit him in kind of in that window between the endurance running out and uh, Mark running out. That's pretty good. I think the endurance is probably about 25 seconds, but I don't know for sure. So. I guess it just happened to work out that way. Nick is plot twisting because he doesn't know he's stalked already. So his heal is going to be worthless. He's just wasting time. about Macmillan makes me want to throw to let the ghouls out. Well, that's lucky. Not going to break me out at all? Oh, okay. Renata went that way. So did Yoichi, just in a roundabout way. Took a straight line there instead of going wide and then cutting in. I definitely would not have gotten him. Damn, that's his first hook. I shouldn't have ran this way because that means it connects. I think that was a mistake that I made. Ah! But it's fine. There's no pallet there, so. Ah. Eh. Is 
this an adept Nick? I think this is an adept Nick. I think the reason he's screaming is probably scene partner. I thought it was dramaturgy for a bit, but I don't think dramaturgy does that. Oh, that's perfect. That is a beautiful 99. Oh. The hesitation. Got a lot of med kit charges. That is definitely needs to be a pre drop. Trick pumpkin. Fuck. That scene partner kind of got him fucked it. That's why scene partner is Nick's worst perk. Greedy. breathing. Hey, um, I really can't reveal him. Okay. Okay. Well, this, nope. Alright. Doesn't want to be stuck there still. It's fine. Fuck, I got stuck. Oh, he got ah! stuck. Alright, it evens out. Exactly, this scene partner too. Whenever you look at the killer, scream and see the R for three seconds. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. This is generic builds for the temple. Okay, let's pick up a pumpkin over there. Probably better work on that yet. if they can see around this. Let me go this way to cut off the loop to the other side. Oh, two. Nice. Oh, I think if I was a bit more careful, I could have had that. Maybe I could trigger the thing. Alright. <laughs> I'm about to be a total dickhead. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, I'm so sorry. Can't lean around the pallet? No. There we go. I'm definitely gonna eat a few pallets, but after that I think I should be in a strong state. I know this is the meet your maker cosmetic. But seeing Adam without a shirt is kind of, or without his like long coat thing. This is crazy. someone in the open instead of like doing it once they're on the or doing something. They could just be able to take a free hit. This is about to be sloppy value. Whoever's doing this has distortion. Healthy <laughs> Kate has distortion. Thank <laughs> you. 
shouldn't have lost her, but I did, so. Thompson House, thank god, okay. This is the last match I have to play for this. I don't know what order I put them in in the video, but you may or may not have just heard me complaining for like the entirety of the fucking uh, Torment Creek game. And I realize that's not super fun to listen to. So I'm gonna try to shut the fuck up. But PSA... Nobody should play Dead by Daylight for seven hours straight like I have. They also annihilated this channel. I mean, it was it was three of them. So I can't be surprised, but damn, that guy's <laughs> all right. Drop Shag Pellet instantly, I guess. Is she gonna try and connect this back? Yeah, that don't work. Oh! She can't even create the Chen! Serena go in there. She's gonna pick up. No, stop picking up. Stop picking up. Stop picking up. Hi. Yeah, hang on. Nope, we're not picking this up either. We're not gonna be doing that. Oh, they're gonna be doing that.
I don't know what she thought she was doing. <laughs> Gotta fucking reveal me. You. You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. I I misclicked and uh Okay, I still get her. Dude, I can't believe I misclicked. Dude, I'm so tired. I, it's so hard to think. Maybe they're all healing under hook. That looked like a fast fall to me. Maybe she's got resilience. I fucking hate cold wind. Bro. How? How does she stun me on the other fucking side of the pallet? That doesn't make sense. Someone has a boon. Yeah, I'm fine with losing that gen because it's basically indefensible anyways. If you have that gen as one of your last three, you're gonna lose it. You can't defend it. Maybe this is bad. Maybe this isn't like great for the video, but I'm so not trying. I literally just can't wait to fucking get off this game after playing for almost seven hours. 
Nobody should ever do this. Don't do this to yourself. Dude, my brain is so fried. I'm not even really, like, stalking or sneaking. Just hitting. Thankfully, Meg will always be Meg. <laughs> Look at that, he wasted time. Here. to make sure. I don't want this save to happen too easily. Imagine I say that and she's still right there. That might have been another dead heart. Okay, thank God. Ugh. Ugh. Holy shit, I had a lot of funny med kits. Oba landing. This is the generic build part. Or Toba landing. Damn. Alright, well that's not good. But 
perhaps this will last longer than 20 seconds. I need to get it back. Yeah, you're not blinding that. And she's dead. Who's over here? Ah, if I would have swung earlier, I could have got that. Okay, it has life. Nobody hops the window. Fine. I think she has some. Um very made for this gameplay. They're also just spamming the blinds. Not a very good plan. <laughs> yep, alright, they lost that heal to Sloppy. Uh, it'll let me down her for free. I don't know why they're still trying to go for flashlight saves. It's not working. Oh, that's, uh, we'll make it on Yui, I think. better. She wasted a bunch of time attempting to blind me. Very arrogant. Yeah, she's really not that good. I'm not sure why she's doing the little follow me thing. You're dead on hook and injured and not good. How well did that one go for you? Two of them are in the void, actually. I'm probably gonna go in there. Then down 
totally have endurance. Yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are terrible. I know. Oh, no. What? The void collapsed, and now she's just gone. Perfect. Well, I need to find the Kate. I guess I don't get to find Kate. Well, she just got bailed out. That's really lucky from her. She doesn't just go back and. No, she doesn't. Okay. Alright, she is. Just a different, more roundabout way. <laughs> Apart from Claudette, this team is pretty solid. I think Claudette was a very clear, weak link. Don't go through rocks. Would you jump that? I downed her into this hook, so she could be anywhere by now. Well, I'll probably just cut. Oh, so I'll probably just cut to where I find her. But I found her.
I'll never understand why people use streamer mode for this. I'm about to just throw this irrelevant opinion directly into the middle of a tutorial that's not about this. But I genuinely think that streamer mode needs to be removed. Because streamer mode doesn't actually help against stream sniping. Like if you go to like Atdarva, Otufu, like a bunch of these people still get stream sniped constantly anyways because their Steam IDs are already out there. If stream snipers want to snipe you, they're going to snipe you and the name really is not going to change anything. And there's a very large amount of people who just put on streamer mode and then just are entitled. I mean, this is a very mild example of it, right? She just thought I was tryharding. You know, like, whatever. Everyone thinks everyone's tryharding. But a lot of people will use it to hide behind anonymity and then say, like, the most vile, like, racist things they can possibly think of. And then you can't do anything about it because they're in streamer mode. And it's just... It's just stupid. And it really needs to be removed from the game. Alright. This is the generic build for Disturbed Board. game anyone healthy can en instantly pick up anyone off the ground and they both get endurance for 10 seconds and there's nothing you can do about it it's really fucking awesome <laughs> it's just really like it's annoying because there's no counterplay to it and it's really strong 10 seconds is such a long time. And they can do it instantly with no counterplay. Okay. Uh, the only thing that stops them from using it is they have to be injured. But, like, just injured on the wall isn't really a good point. It's like, so you do everything. I have no idea what she's doing.
now she's releasing the ghosts, I think. I really don't want Hattie to be healed, but whatever. It's not like I do anything about it. I looked for her. Oh shit. Not mean to do that. Oh, dude. I don't know if there's much left here. Oh. Maybe that's the last god. No, I Back on Jens? What is she even gonna do about this? Is that life? Nah, it can't be. If that's life, she's throwing. Ah, fuck. Not enough. This Hattie is one of those, like, bad survivors where they don't really know how to loop, they just kind of drop the pallet and run away. So all those kinds of pallets are gone. So she's just kind of gonna die. And it's important to notice what, like, the skill level of the people you're playing against are. Just because if you're playing against people who are bad, but you're expecting them to be good and make a good decision, then you're just going to end up mind gaming yourself. Hattie is not going to take it. She just drops and runs. 
If I started expecting her to fake things, then I would just lose. Oh! Ah! Oh, yeah. The Cheryl is nearby. Mm. There she is. Oh. A bit early for me to mark her, but that's fine. At this point, I don't really need to be too careful. Holy shit. <laughs> Three brand new parts. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Maybe they missed the skill checks on all of them. How do you bring three commodious, like, brand new parts with extra charges and still do the gen so slow that I don't even notice you have toolboxes? That's crazy. They must have missed every brand new part and skill check. All right. Wreckers Yard. Wait, let me, am I recording? I am recording. I thought I was, but just to make sure. I would hate to lose it again, like my fucking Nostromo game. Uh, three over there, one over here. Okay. I'm gonna get a quick 99 on this guy and then go disturb the three people. That'll definitely be more valuable. Oh yeah, they're stacked this gen. Did he not see me? Hey buddy. He's going back? Yeah. Yeah. That's a fucking mistake. That's a very greedy mistake to make. I think that you can just go back to the gen. Yeah, there's no shot I hit that. Honestly, he didn't even need to drop it. Oh, damn, the window faces this way. Here's the thing, this guy is literally just feeding me pallets. I think he's about to go down. Damn! That doesn't hit! Oh, fuck. Well, now this is really bad for me. There's still multiple fillers. Okay. Um. I know this map is highly RNG dependent. I think I might have got one of the fuck spawns. This guy has, um... 
Calm spirit. Dude. Alright, this is actually fucked. Yeah, you needed to drop that for sure. They were healing, so I don't think they're here for this. Now this is where if I had either of them marked, that I would be in a very strong position. Because I don't. Oh, they're getting to the save fast. Okay. Damn, very fast. I think he has to pre-drop this. No? Oh, he has off the record. He really greeds it again? Does he make that? He must have made for this to want to greed that again. Yeah. I push him this way, break it this way, he's kind of quiet. He went into the void. Yeah, dude, they're already healed and everything. Yeah, and these guys, dude, holy fuck, yeah. This is just so bad for me. I really feel like I can't do anything. This is a normally good map as well. There's just so much safety everywhere. There's still a very strong pallet there. Oh, okay, nice. I think this is basically a free down. So try to help him. No, he's not in time. Ah! Yeah. Everyone else is still on Genzo, though. So this is like... Dwight. They're both dead on hook. They're probably healing the other Dwight, but if not, that'd be great for me. There they go. He was healing. Yeah, this Dwight is going to be dead on hook. Is this? Ah! Ooh, nice. Okay. That's so good. He's dead. He healed himself. He can't have DS or anything.
They have both their gens with very high progress, though. I, I, I think maybe I could get two. side Ooh, that might be one of the like craziest long hits I've ever seen oh and that stops this gen that's actually so good I'm gonna have to slug him I need this very quickly He's gonna drag me away so I can't search the gens. Ah! <clears throat> but he's dead, he's dead. Okay, Ace is picked. No. That gen has actually been surged a lot. Okay, you're just gonna lose your progress doing that. That's another surge on the more important gen. Okay. This is fine. Holy shit. That got really bad. For a second. One hook down three gens. Turned around. It has a lot on it too. That's crazy. I guess it's a good thing they didn't notice it. Ah, oh, there he is. You're good. Oh, yeah, he's all the way back down there. Damn. How did he start to reveal me? That was close. Oh, I didn't even look at their prestigious. A lot of people like to complain that these lower tier killers like Ghostface are very susceptible to bully squads or gen rushing. Gen rushing is not really a real thing. Unless survivors have like four Gigamax toolboxes or hyper-focused stacking builds, you are probably just coping if you complain about gen rushing and you're not pressuring your gens properly. A lot of people who complain about this are just going back and forth between gens. People who experience will tell you the best slowdown that you can get in this game is downing a survivor. If you down and hook a survivor and then go to chase someone else, that is immediately only one person working on gens. Even with how Ghostface rolls his early game stocks into a crushing mid game, he excels when you pressure survivors more than pressuring gens. A good tactic that can do this is if a survivor is 99, you could try to bait them into taking protection hits by pretending to camp or tunnel, camping less so now that the changes are implemented. You can get an easy down doing this. This can also work against flashlight teams, especially in the current meta of background player. Flashlight saves are now more viable than they used to be. However, you can just look at a wall and you're not going to get flashed. Oftentimes, even with a black round player, if you look in a different direction, survivors still struggle to actually save just because the duration of background player is longer than the time it takes to pick up. So in general, flashlights are still the weakest item because medkits and toolboxes actually progress objectives and flashlights really don't. Even still, 
for players that just can't seem to stay away from flashlights, you can do something about it. Especially with Philly, if multiple survivors are swarming a survivor in the open with flashlights to the point you have no way to pick up, you can gradually start to stalk them even if they are revealing you very quickly. You have time to chip the survivor's stalk meter because they are here to get this save and not actually doing gens. So you don't have to worry about the time as much. If all three survivors are harassing this pickup, there's nobody doing gens. This is great for you. You're just stalling for time and attritioning them out and they're letting you do it. So you have time to do this as long as you can see a good amount of them near you. If it's only one, then you're going to be able to pick up anyways, so it doesn't matter. Once they're 99, which might take a few power usages, if you manage to go them into a mistake by faking a pickup, uh, or if a survivor's already 99, you don't even have to chip them down, you can fake a pickup and get an easy down, they're going to run in for the save, and you can just turn around and down them. This can down a would-be rescuer and snowball the game significantly. This same technique works for sabotage and head-on teams, although those are very rare now. The best counter to Ghostface is unfortunately just survivors being on comms, as then your stealth is four times less effective. If one person knows where you are, everyone's going to know where you are. That's just the basis of them communicating. The best counter in-game is if a survivor follows you around and harasses you. Every time you try to use your power, they just keep exposing you, and you can't get away from them. But they stay in a safe area, so if you try to chase them, they're just going to be fine. And you know that. You're, like, you're trying to get your ambushes in. You're trying to get goaded into a bad chase. You can't use your power. This is a very bad situation to be in. You can try to hide. The best thing to do is try your hardest to get away from that survivor. But wait to see if they make a mistake. If someone is harassing your power, you can try to slowly chip them out like you would with a rescuer on the stock meter. And then see if you can try to lead them if they're following you try to see if you can lead them into an unsafe area and then you'll be able to attack them and hopefully down them another thing to note is that survivors will often hide inside of you while you are stalking this is because ghostface and myers both lose their collision while stalking so standing inside of you will abuse the low killer fov and cause you to not gain stock progress while they are revealing you in this case unless you are high enough on stock progress and you have the wallet or something where you know you can get your power back very soon or you've got play with your food and don't want to waste stacks, you likely just want to hit them. If you have sloppy, that will apply. If you have saved the best for last, you'll gain stacks. So it's just good, unless you're wasting play with your food or your 99. If you want more additional help, you can't figure out what you're doing wrong, or you just need more improvement, you can always message me. Uh, send me a Twitter DM, send me a Discord message. I would be more than happy to fix your ghost face games, tell you what you're doing wrong, just that we can all get better and we can collectively enjoy this very fun and very underplayed killer more. I honestly don't know how long this video is going to be, but if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching, but more importantly, I hope that you learned something and that you have as much fun playing the ghost as I do.